there are emotions that carry me away, because a moment is unforgettable, life-changing. It is not at all meaningless. Sorry about that. In the small Rwandan village of Kabeho, a series of extraordinary events unfolded. The first took place at 12.35 on November the 28th, 1981. Alfonsine Mumareke, a young 16-year-old student attending a college run by nuns, saw a figure that no one else could see. On November the 28th, which by the way was a Saturday, we all went to the refectory. I began tidying up the plates when I heard a voice saying, Child. I found myself isolated from my surroundings. I lost sight of all my friends around me, and all I could see was a cloud. A beautiful lady stood in the cloud. I asked her, who are you, my lady? And she answered, I am the mother of the word. She was still very young at the time, so it would not have been her imagination. The expression Ninava Jambo in Kinyarwanda, Mother of the Word, did not appear in any of the religious materials that we had at that time. The Mother of the Word reappeared to Alfonsine on that very night. This time, though, they talked about Alfonsine's private life and about her relationship with her family. The mother of the word asked her to encourage her friends to pray with great fervor and told her about her future visits. Alfonsine recounted all that had happened to the headmistress of the college. The headmistress, however, did not believe her. She did not want to show herself in all the apparitions that followed. She wanted instead to help me understand that I was living a false life, for me to question and start again, and so to stop all this silliness. However, I did see her regularly and could always say, here is what the mother of the word told me. Everyone at Kibeo used to say that maybe she is mad. The child is mad. We did not believe in all that. Did not believe. At times, I would ask myself whether it was real. Alfonsine Murmureke, with her boisterous character, who had seen the Holy Virgin, she really is active. Alfonsine, in class, is a pupil like many others. Alfonsine Murmureke was a young girl who did not pray much. She prayed when it was necessary. At the beginning, when she began having the apparitions, we never believed her. To begin with, when they cornered me, they implied that I was mentally unbalanced. But at the same time, I felt an inner strength that gave me to understand that what I was living was real. When the Virgin Mary told me, I will come on such and such a day, during such moments, some said, it's untrue. The whole wait before the apparition was hellish. It really wasn't easy. The Gisaka region, from where Alfonsin came, was known throughout the whole of Rwanda for its magic practices and occultism. So people began to think that Alfonsin was cooperating with evil supernatural forces. All of us Rwandans are afraid of this region because it is said that there are many, many witches there. I was 16 years old. I found myself in an unknown place. I had just arrived. This wasn't my place. This was not the region of my birth. When someone stands before me and says, 
I am sure and certain that it's not the Virgin Mary, and I can prove it based on this or that person's statements, then I think that's diabolical. I understood from the start that these were attacks. I could feel my heart pounding as if somebody was hitting me. It was like being struck. It was then that I nevertheless started to pray. I said, right, mother of the world, I believe that it is you. That is what I feel inside, that you appeared to me. But is it possible for you to show yourself to others from another region and class than my own, with whom I have never chatted? If you could have chosen another girl... And when I also began having apparitions, like the second visionary, on January the 12th, 1982, students began to say, the demons attack those who do not pray. According to the students, Alphonsine was in the grip of the demon. But how could the demon also attack Natalie, who prayed? There was a young girl who came up and said, and do you know, Natalie is in the chapel. We were praying together and she was motionless. We tried to budge her, but she would not move. The others ran away, but I did not run with them. I felt in my heart that the Virgin Mary was there. None of the statues of the Virgin Mary that I have ever seen resemble her. I saw her face and it was very beautiful. When you look at her, you see that she has a beauty that transcends that of whites or blacks. Nonetheless, her eyes very closely resemble those of blacks. She was between 20 and 30 years old. She was at once like a young bride. She had a very young air. She said, the message that I give you is not destined uniquely for you. It is rather a message for the whole world. What I say to you, I do not say only to you. I say it to all the people on earth. She said that the people lived as they wished. She asked us to love God and our fellow human beings with a love that knows no lies. My fellow students, the headmistress, governors and teachers, none of them understood anything of all that was happening right up to 1982. They persecuted us. The headmistress used to say, you are spreading feelings of insecurity throughout the school. I will dismiss you. But the Virgin continued to work miracles. Students, the headmistress and some of the teachers were converted. Three months after the first apparition, something happened that was to prove Alphonsine and Natalie's demeanor worthy of their faith. On the 1st of March, 1982, a third student, Marie Claire, also saw the mother of the word. Up to that time, she had been a most vociferous opponent, inciting her fellow students to revolt against Alphonsine and Natalie, accusing them of being possessed by the devil. And from that moment, the college children began saying, now that is something extraordinary. Marie Claire, who persecuted Alphonsine, also has visions. From what Alphonsine told me, Marie Claire kissed her and said that what she was saying was true, was right. News about the extraordinary events at Cabejo soon spread throughout the country. Journalists and pilgrims from throughout Rwanda, neighboring countries, as well as beyond, including Europe, began to flock to the small village. There was a 